Okay, here we go. All right. we are in. Here we go. Lots of wetland over there. You got the bird counter and breeding manager. Not the worst. Yeah, I mean, I know they've not got any, they've not got any tucking cards in their hand, but uh, you'd probably go for that over breeding manager. Really? I, I have many games where, you know, I regret not taking breeding manager at the end. <laughs> so Yeah, I feel, I feel like it's one of those where if you have it, um, you can really, you know, target getting it because, you know, there's there's quite a few birds that at least have those four egg spots. Um, yeah. It's it's definitely one you don't want to be picking up at the end of the game because you won't have planned for it. You know, you won't have picked up those those four egg spot birds and you won't have laid the eggs in the right spots. But yeah, it, you know, you can you can normally rely on two or three points from it. Yeah, yeah, that that's how I think about it. Sometimes, like I rather have one or two points than nothing. Yeah. Um, that's that's interesting here. I mean, obviously they're gonna mm. have a good start with their wetland. So the key here is yeah. can they find the forest bird here? A good supply of fish as well. If they go kingfisher pelican. <laughs> yep. It's uh, fish all over the place. Yep. I mean, it. Yeah. I I mean, definitely you want to get the kingfisher down first turn. Um, especially there's nothing to pick up from the tray, so that that work out. Yep. I like the Kingfisher and that um, end of round goal for the first round as well. It yeah. helps with the star nest and then obviously you've got the third the yeah. third end of round as well. So yeah, I, I like the Kingfisher. I think it's a good it's a good bird to get down because you know your opponent is gonna be playing some wetlands, so you can you can always count on, you know, at least one or two fish from it. Yeah. And I, I like the Willet and Kingfisher too because um, with Willet you save some food and then you also have the ground nest that's good for third end of round, so Yep. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I mean who knows, they might they might even get a you know, a free fish and be able to play the Willet with that, so Yeah. It, it works quite well with the Kingfisher. Yeah. Alright, looks like they are going with the bird counter here. Indeed. Yeah. So yeah, that 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 probably is what I would have done that was my initial reaction but i think you made a good point about the uh the breeding manager you know i think especially with the kingfisher with those four spots you could probably count on at least filling that up Ooh. Um, but yeah look at this mm, interesting a I dove mean, i like That's, dove, I, I don't, right? yeah i think i think you you keep dove here definitely um, not sure i'm not sure what else you keep i mean I, I my first instinct is dove and bitten, right? Dove in the forest, and then you pick up food to play the bitten and rodentologist. That's nine points. Pretty strong start. Yeah, I think definitely if you're if you're going to go for the bitten, then then rodentologist absolutely makes sense. Yeah, um, and certainly with the forester, you know you're probably going to go dove in the forest, so you're already you know limiting those those spots you can get. That, that meet the forest to bonus card, so it would be a bit of a gamble to go for that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I would say pretty equal start for both. You know, no mm. one is getting like super strong hand here. Um, I mean, no. On, yeah. I mean, I, th I think I think with the dove and the bittern, it's probably a slightly stronger start mm -hmm. just because you are having that. You know, you're, you're getting a good start in the in the forest as well as in the wetlands, and obviously the dove giving you the eggs means, you know, you can sort of avoid uh, avoid the grasslands at least for this first round. They might struggle with the first end of round goal though. So you know, if you if you don't get any bowl nests down, that's a four point, uh, you know, loss you're giving to your opponent straight away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely like to see the dove um, in early game, but in terms of points, yeah, they're pretty equal. Ooh, I don't. Looks like yeah, they're... I'm not sure about this. Yeah, I know. I you... don't know. I don't know why you go for go for cards straight away. I think you yeah, you think you get the kingfisher down, and then you know you can lay eggs on it, and then you're getting two cards. So right. I, I'm, I, I think maybe they're looking at Siskin for the bonus card, but mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't draw it straight away. Yeah, even Siskin is not their best option for forest here. So no, no. And dove, I think, as expected, and then you know they can go to the bird feeder, get that grub they need, and get the egg, and get the bitten down, and then start drawing cards, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully, get something to add to what they've got. Right. 
So two more turns before the bitten will be down, so there won't be any free fish soon. Um, yeah. I, I I think they kept the seed here, thinking like worst case scenario they can they can pick up the siskin and play the siskin, um, but. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting that they kept the seed and not the grub because I think if they kept the grub, you know, you could go will it now, mm -hmm. and then you know you spend the egg for the will it, but you would have spent the egg drawing cards anyway, so you kind of you you, you get that egg uh, cost anyway. So I think yeah, maybe maybe a bit of a mistake there, possibly yeah. gambling on the fish, but yeah, yeah. obviously, Bitten's going to go down now, but that's it's a bit late for them. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think that was a fair gamble. Like, you, you would expect your opponent to play a wet Lambert early, so... Ooh. Hmm, they're getting both, <laughs> both tucking birds. Uh, that, yeah, that, 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 that was some interesting choices there, because... Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Swift is nice, but I just don't see where they're going to get the cards for it. You know, yeah. They are they are going to go kingfisher will it that's only two cards a turn you know you can't afford to be tucking that many behind the swift if if that's the limited supply that you're getting from the wetlands exactly with with the wetland setup there's no way they they can get extra cards there so they definitely yeah. need like mergangster or the 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 greeb or the mallard yeah. something like that yeah, well, we've got the Meganza in the tray now, and I'm just wondering if that's they're going to pick it up. Yeah. It might be something that Floating looks at, um, at, at taking, because I think that would be, you know, that would be a really strong card for Kalari to get at this point. It is true. It's definitely stronger than the bit in here, and mm, I'm not like sure why they, why they went for the food there. They don't need the grub, or they don't need the grain even. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure what that was all about. Maybe they they were trying to delay the the free fish for, um, yeah, for possibly. Kolaru. Um, but yeah, I mean that 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 was a good point. Like if I were floating, I I would be thinking about whether to pick up the Mergangster. Um, yeah, yeah. But, Although having said that, Kalari's not gone and picked it up, so it's yeah. still there. I'm surprised it's gone two turns at uh, three turns now with the bitten going down and no one's taking it because you know that Magans is a that's a really strong card to get down early on. Oh and yeah. And even you know looking forward to that that third end of round goal, it's got the four ground nest spots. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm surprised they're both sleeping on this here. Yeah, and and the Mergangster is good for breeding man. Oh, they did not pick the breeding manager. Never mind. No, but it's a good point. It would have been another one, you know, had they kept the breeding manager. That's already two birds they would have got down instead of you know forcing themselves down this this tucking bird path. That it, you know, it's it's a bold decision because they're just not going to get the cards to use them. Yep. I mean, I I think Mergangster is still worth it for floating now. The the long term potential for yep. Mergangster is just so much better yeah i mean floating's not in a bad position now that the willet's gone down because mm -hmm. actually you know they can use the bittern and be the only one to benefit from it uh you know they might be a bit scared of getting that second wetland bird down because suddenly if they do activate they're gonna have to share it but yeah i still think the maganza is, is such a strong card that that they're that they're leaving in the tray here right um, I mean, that's a good point. Without playing the second bird, they also have that free card advantage. So um, now it's interesting. Flan. No. <laughs> floating. I'm not, I'm not playing today. <laughs> <laughs> floating got the cuckoo bird, but they do not have a bonus. So. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, it's. Kalari's not really set that much up in the grasslands, so. But they they got some good bird now, so they got the voucher and the sparrow can really help them to set up their um, grassland more efficiently than playing the siskin. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind the vulture. I think they they desperately needed uh, something in the forest. I'll be interested to see now if they do play that or if they they stick with the original idea of going the siskin. Obviously, they've got the food for that. Yeah, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. My instinct would go for the voucher and sparrow, and then maybe tuck the siskin with the swift. Yeah, the yeah. Throw. I mean, I think what they they what they're definitely thinking is that um, you know that end of round. Or, I mean, they've got the, uh, the you know they've got the star nest already, but you know they might they might think about um, 
you know, getting uh, getting another bird down. Oh, look like they're really gung ho yeah. with the siskin here. So it looks like maybe they'll tuck the voucher or one of the card. It would be interesting to see. Um, yeah, I mean, I imagine they'll they'll lay eggs this last turn because they've not got any. So just to yeah. know, secure that secure that end of round goal. But yeah, it'd be interested to see whether they do then play the vulture mm -hmm. or if they just go straight for food and, and and tuck either that or the sparrow. Yeah, floating has another chance, but did not pick up the mer gangster here. Yep. Still, still leaving the Vagansa. <laughs> I know. I I think Mother Love made a good point. I I think um, floating might might have tried to bait Kalaru to play a second wetland bird. Um, that's why they didn't play the bit and right away. Yeah, it's a good point. I think you know certainly if I'm playing and I see the bit and go down, it would make me delay that second wetland bird because I want free cards. So if my opponent's going to give them to me then you know all the better but yeah i think definitely that will it going down was kind of the signal okay i can play the bit and, and actually maybe not you know need to rely on the bagancer because the bitten's going to be giving me free cards right um i i think floating problem now is the bird feeder really is not what they what they want to yeah. see they need they need some rodent and grub and um it's just not there I mean, they, they, they can put down the Cuckoo, but that's no bonus again. That's unfortunate. Hopefully, they'll, they'll get one now. All right, they're starting. Um, yeah, lots of good birds in the tray. Um, you have the Grebe, you have the Nuthatch. They can really build up their forest there with those yep. two birds. Definitely, and they've you know they've got plenty of food uh, you know, to get the Nuthatch down, so I think that's, a, a, that's absolutely strong. A strong addition to the dove that they've already got in the in the forest, so they can hopefully start building that up. Yeah, that yeah, with the nut hatch and the and the owl strong forest. The only thing yep. that 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 is worrisome is the end of round goal for this game is very eggs heavy, so um, mm. that's gonna mm. be and a it's, problem. It's, it's interesting that it's it's eggs in the grasslands for this round and yet neither of them have got a grassland bird yeah. down yet. <laughs> and uh, and floating doesn't really have that many um, good options to get something down in the grassland so yeah B might just come down to you know who draws the card because even again in the tray there's no grassland birds so it might have to just rely on some blind draws here and Ooh, see what comes up interesting mm, why don't they not, why are they not picking going for the nut hatch not yeah. going for a nut hatch not even the grieve I mean they need the grieve for um, the cuckoo bird unless exactly. unless they are they are kind of gambling on Kalaru not picking it up but um yeah it's interesting I, uh, yeah I, I'm not I mean, sure about this <laughs> yeah I mean you would at least play the woodpecker and the cuckoo before you pick up food right that, yeah that would be a like, play yeah I feel like they've had to waste a card there because you know they could have they could have gone for the the nut hatch mm -hmm. uh, you know and got that down first mm -hmm. and then when they're gaining food they save the card but they're also getting the cash on the nut hatch as well so yeah it yeah. feels like a bit of a, a bit of a waste there mm -hmm. yeah that that was missed opportunity there with the nut hatch a little bit hopefully it doesn't get pick up but it might be yeah um but it looks like Kalari's going for food anyway so they're kind of I feel like Already in this game, we've had a few, you know, nice cards come up, and they're both giving each other multiple opportunities to take it. But oh, the grebe! Here we go. Oh, and another tucking bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting. Um, do they? I guess the grebe is nice, but do they really need another bird in the wetland? Yeah, I'm not sure they do. Um, but I guess they. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's that third, that third wetland bird is then inviting floating to play a second one because they can play a second one and still keep the bitten's power so yeah it's a it's whether it's just to take the grieve to deny floating from having it but i don't know if floating wanted it they could have had it first turn so it's it, yeah it's a bit of an odd start to this round yeah i guess what they were thinking is like maybe if they get a free fish then they get five points kind of free for it mm. still ignoring the nut hatch here <laughs> <laughs> no that, one wants the nut hatch. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then it it's just not working out. Even with the metal lock, they don't have a ground nest. So, um, the the nest type is just not working out for floating here. 
Yeah, I mean, they did just take the woodcock, so I wonder if that they're thinking that to maybe pair with the meadowlark. Yeah. Um, I mean, it might just have been purely to deny Kalari from getting a grassland bird, because again, there's none in the tray. Why? Um, but yeah. I why don't know. why is Kolaru picking up so many wetland birds? <laughs> That's a lot of wetland birds there. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming these are all just going to get tucked later. They can't be playing all of these, but I don't know why they're specifically taking these up and why you wouldn't, you know, chance the chance the deck and see what you get. And then even if that's not very good, it's you could still tuck those later. Yeah, I, I, I mean that's a good point. Like at least they have the option to tuck them. So, um, yeah. a lot of the birds that floating has its hand is going to be kind of wasted. I guess they can turn them into food if they get their forest up soon. Yeah, but again, they need to start they need to start building that up. Like you had the you had the nut hatch that's still in the tray. They got that <laughs> owl in their hand. That was, you know, a really good potential for for some good forest birds getting down and and they've kind of slept on that for now. Yeah, it it was definitely an interesting decision that the nut hatch actually stay there for so long <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah i mean floating's now gone woodcock in the in the grasslands maybe they're thinking add it add meadow like to that and start laying eggs but i don't know it's only going to get you so far yeah the capacity is so low like yeah. um with two spot each um yeah so finally there's some rodent here i think is that what they were waiting for okay yeah, hopefully that taking the rodent means that they're at least considering getting the getting the owl down. I think they might be waiting for more um, more grubs as well to hope to get the cuckoo down. But I mean, like we said before, they they still haven't got a bowl nest, so it's yeah. not much use to them. The the greeb was perfect there, but they miss it. Mm. Yeah. And if someone has the time, can they DM Kolaru to tell them to play in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got Board another view. we've got another Habitat View player. Yeah, so. I mean, we should have clarified that next time at the beginning of the yeah. stream. Yeah, yeah, Maybe. we need to we need to add that into the rules for the server. You shouldn't be allowed to play here if you play in Habitat <laughs> View. <laughs> yeah, definitely not when you're live streaming. But yeah, heart no. seed if you can do that, that would be great. Oh, now they're kind of okay. So they're. They are really gunning for that second end of round goes here, um, but in mm. in return they are wasting quite a bit of food. Um, yeah, I mean I don't mind getting the owl down because they have got the rodentologist obviously, so that mm -hmm. is a you know it's a seven point bird. But you know when you think of building a nice strong grasslands engine, I don't think woodcock owl as as yeah. the start for that. So it's a bit of a weird one. Yeah, those are definitely not. But I I think it's just purely to to. You know, compete for the second end of round here. Um, we'll see if it pay off. All right. Mm. And again, that's another odd choice. Like you, you should have played yeah. the sparrow first and get so that you don't have to spend an egg, right? Yeah. I mean, it does. It does kind of feel like, yeah. If they wanted to go for the sparrow, you know, they've had that in their hand for a while. They could have played it earlier. Whether it's just purely reactionary play to mm -hmm. try and. Uh, you know, get enough eggs in the grassland to sort of at least challenge for this end around goal. But I mean, Floating's just played the meadow like now, so I don't think they're going to be able to get enough eggs from that just with the one turn. Yeah, I mean, they have two turns. They can really just both like go all in. Mm. But they're moving the sparrow anyway, which is a bit odd. <laughs> Where did they move it to? So they probably will move it back, I assume? Yeah, but then why lay eggs on it and move it? Why not lay eggs on the swift that you know isn't going to move and stay yeah. in the grasslands? And I hope they at least lay the egg from the swift on the swift. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise that just feels a bit weird. No way they're tucking the grebe. You, you got the fish there. <sighs> the snipe. I mean, yeah. that was that was Starness and you got the fish. So that was kind of odd um, okay. and they're, they're really strongly signaling that they're going to take food on this next turn because yeah. that sparrow has got all the eggs and it's just sat there so yeah it's, it's a weird it's a weird sequence that yep um let's see so they really want to play the snipe maybe they're kind of planning for long term to get a lot of eight a lot of cards to 
do like an end game tugging with with their grassland. That that could be part of it. Um. Yeah, they definitely need cards if they are gonna. You know, they've already got the they've got the tucking card in the grasslands. I think they've got one in the forest, and then they've also got another one in their hand. Whether they're gonna play that, but yeah, they certainly they need. They need as many cards as they can get, otherwise, you know, those tucking cards are just not going to be worth anything. Right. Okay. Morphing again, powers. <laughs> in interesting choices here. Um, yeah. Again, I, I was a little bit surprised by Kolaru food choices. They, they pick up, like, a lot of fish, but then there's a exactly. high potential they can get free fish. So well, that's the thing. You, you, you tucked the one fish card that you had in your hand and then spent a turn gaining loads of fish mm. I, I don't i don't get it i don't know what that fish is for because they've not got anything in their hand that that could use it so yeah it feels like a weird a weird choice of food there right but yeah cowberry's a nice pickup um yeah um floating definitely will love to pick up that kite over there um yeah i mean if you're kalaru you kind of you want to load up on those uh, on those pink birds because you can see that floating is going to want to make use of that grasslands now they've got the meadow lark mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's that's five eggs a turn yeah um you know if they get they could potentially even get the the golden eye and the cowbird down right um, and that's that's going to give them two eggs plus the extra one that they're getting from the meadow lark anyway so they could probably do that and then not even have to lay eggs themselves right yeah uh, th that's a good point i think they have the star nest with the kingfisher, so that's gonna help them to um, get all those free eggs. Not a bad idea. Looks like that's what they're going for as well. Yep, and they can easily get two grain with with their forest there, so that that's gonna. Yeah, yeah that's true. They've got the siskin, so that will give them one, and there is one in the bird feeder as well. So unless yeah. unless floating's gonna go and take that, but it, it it's definitely gonna give floating you know some some headache here with with two pink power yeah yeah i think they're gonna have to think carefully about um you know switching switching the focus uh, yeah. you know they've still got the owl that they are probably going to want to play because it does fit the rodentologist but you know if they get that down they could probably try and pivot to to just going for food and getting their eggs that way because you know otherwise you're giving your opponent two or three eggs a turn it's, it's just not worth running that grasslands right so, I mean, things are looking good. They have a lot of cards with Rodin here. So, you know, you can really pick up the Kai, the Hawk, just, you know, play them and build up your forest. And then the Great Egret is perfect for endgame. Um, it just all comes down to if they can get a... Um, if, if they get the blessing from the Bird Feeder. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely going to score high on this bonus card now because, like you say, they've got the they've got the egret, which is a lovely card to get, and the owl. It's interesting that they have left both the kite and the hawk uh, yeah. in the trays. Whether they just think that the they probably owl won't get got is enough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean they're they're probably also looking at because there's no rodent in the bird feeder, so that they were a little bit hesitant. Mm. Um, and. Yeah, here we go. We have another black chin hummingbird. <laughs> Just so annoying when when you get when you, when you get this hummingbird here. Yeah, you see a hummingbird and you get excited, and then you see it's this one, and yeah, it's not great. <laughs> yeah. And they're just gonna discard it anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how that's how that's how hated it is. Just yeah, discard it for free. Yeah. Oh, again, the bird feeder just not great. You know, floating need the grub, need the rodent. They are just not there. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming they'll go back to the go back to the bird feeder this this next turn. But then, what do they get rid of? Are they gonna are they gonna get rid of the swallow? I don't know. Yeah. Also, it's interesting. Kolaru focus on playing the snipe. I guess they they. Yeah, if, if I were floating, I saw the two pink powers were gone. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be laying eggs um, if I don't have to. So... Yeah, I wonder if Kalari's maybe looking at the end of round. Um, you know, floating's got those those six egg spots. And I think, uh, you know, with the Kingfisher and the Snipe, I think that gets Kalari up to six as well. So they mm -hmm. might be going for the tie here, but yeah, yeah we'll see.
Did they just get rid of the cowbird? <laughs> did I see that right? Yes, they did. I think they tucked it under the under the siskin. So clearly they they don't want all the pink powers. <laughs> they yeah. just want to take them and, and not let floating get them. But okay, but, the owl's gone down, which is good. I'm 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 pleased to see that because it's been sat there a while. Yep, and now they have the rodent and the grub that they need, so um, yep. it could work. I mean, yeah, that was definitely interesting. All right, now this is down. Yeah, that's definitely going to put floating off from from laying eggs again because you know you're giving away. Well, you're getting five eggs yourself, but you're giving two to your opponent, and that's not what you want to be doing. Yeah, but definitely a... I mean, floating definitely get a pass from having double pink power here, which is... yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'm interested they went for food and then didn't take the rodent. They went for, I think, a one grub and one grain, so... I, I'm not sure what their plan is here for what they're going to play next. Mm -hmm. All right, what now? Again, they probably don't care as much. They probably can tuck a lot of this card. Yeah, I would I would expect that most of these cards they're picking up are not going to get played. I think these are just sort of, you know, tucking tucking fodder for their for their grasslands, but I don't know, it's not it's not that strong with grasslands if you're kind of gambling on the free eggs from your opponent. Yep. I don't know. Oh, look at this. I mean, I have to agree with Mother Love here. Like, floating card draw in this game has been consistently very good. Yeah. I mean, for the bonus card, <laughs> they've drawn so many rodent eating birds. They just keep showing crazy. up. And yeah. now they have the Great Horn Owl. Um, yeah. And they could easily get into double digits for this rod rodentologist here. Yeah. And, and, and it was interesting. Yeah, the whole game, floating just. I don't know, they, they, they kept the Cuckoo, so definitely they thought about playing it, but ju they just, you know, kind of missed all the opportunity to play a bow nest, a star nest there, so I think that's not gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, they could have taken the Gree pretty early on, but kind of since then, they've not, I don't even think they've drawn a bow nest bird, so they've not even sort of had the temptation to play the Cuckoo, because it's just not gonna get any eggs. Yeah, so it looks like they're, they're going to tuck the Cuckoo here, but, you know, my question is, you know, how are they going to get enough food to play all those big bird, you know? Yeah, I think at this point, I don't know, you you want something else to play with the egret. I mean, it would still be a decent play on its own with the rodentologist. But yeah, I'd be looking at I'd be looking at getting enough food to at least get that owl down because, you know, that's that's 10 points with the rodentologist minus any eggs they're going to pay for it. You know, that's that's a big bird to be getting down in the last round. Yeah, again, come downs to the bird feeder. That's a rodent now. They they need two. Yeah, I'd definitely be taking the rodent while it's there. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you don't know if your opponent... I mean, seeing uh, seeing Kalari's hand, they've got the road runner. They might think about getting that down. Um, you know, cause it is seven points. It's, it's not a bad bird, but... I yeah. Can, can floating even compete for the third end of round goals here? Um, looks like maybe not because Kolaru already got six. Yeah, I think it's going to be a tie. I think they probably had that in mind as as saving the eggs as their last turn, so they did manage to fill up. I think Kolaru is going to win this. Yeah, because of the free eggs. Yeah, and that's the difference. That's what those those pink powers and those co-op egg birds. Yeah, you know, that's that's kind of given that's given Kolaru that. That end of round win without even really having to try. Yeah, and the star nest. Yeah, yeah. The star nest is the star nest is so helpful because it works with the meadow lark um, for the ground nest, but it's also you know you can use the golden knight to, to lay eggs there as well. So yeah, very strong. More rodent. <laughs> yeah. More rodent. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just keeps showing up and begging, floating. Um, yeah. If yeah, now it might be an interesting, I don't know, it's, it might be too late for that because it's just not a strong enough bird, but the problem for floating now is they filled up all their ground nest spots, so they can't lay eggs, because if you lay eggs, you're missing out on the meadow lark, you skip that, so they're going to have to try and at least get this owl down and sort of try and clear some of those egg spots before they can go back to laying eggs again. Yep, yeah.
Yeah, with the habitat view, I I really don't have a clear idea what kalaru boards yeah. look like right now, <laughs> especially with the yeah. migratory bird. Um, yeah, the, the sparrow keeps moving. Uh, I mean, uh, we get a good look at their wetlands at least. That's kind of where most of their birds are. But yeah, I'm starting to forget what they've got in the forest and the grass. Oh, look at that bird feeder! It really hurts. Not great. Not no, great. You'd want at least one rodent there. I mean, if you have to pay two for one for one of the rodents, then fine. But at this point with the two fish, they might just look and get get the egret down instead. Yeah, again, nothing to pair with the egret, but they can they can definitely use their swallow to pick something up. Um, I mean, the the safe choice here is the mergangster, but not ideal. Yeah, but again, even for the mergangster, there's there's no fish in the feeder, so yeah, and they're only they're only getting two food at a time, so they'd have yeah. to go back to the bird feeder twice yeah. just to get enough food for the mergangster. So at that point, it's it's not really worth it. Yeah, and and here's the thing, I I mean, I don't want to bring this up again, but that 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 um grebe would have been so nice um with the starness and. You can play it with the great egret. Um. Yeah, I mean, even if they'd if they'd already got the grebe down now, that would have been the two extra exports they needed to tie that third end of round goal, and you know, it it, it really would have helped. Yeah, just having that having that extra bird to fill with eggs from the meadow lark, but they left it, so it's it's too late for that now. Ravens yeah. come up, maybe slightly too late to get that down. Definitely. But. And yeah. and what's going on here? That's a lot of cards. Um, is that yeah, enough turn to assume, tuck? Yeah, I can only assume that they're gonna just go tucking now. But yeah, there's four turns left. I think they can only tuck one a turn based on the setup they've got. So yeah, I, I don't know if that was just a gamble play. You know, mm -hmm. try and dig and and get a good bird um, to get down. I mean, they might look at playing their luck because I think that does count towards the bird counter, even though it's a pink power. Um, they keep looking at it. So yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of wonder I'm wondering if they're if they're if they're considering playing that, but it's it's seven points, so it might not be a terrible idea. Yeah, OP Lark here. Oh, I mean look at look at floating. They just got another yeah. golden ego there. Like they 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 have the perfect, you know, luck for card draw for this bonus card here. They they really could have scored quite a bit of points. Yeah, it's just a shame because their forest is is so weak. I mean, yeah. if they did at least have the nut hatch down. They could be discarding some of those excess cards. Yeah, getting the rodents. I mean, if they had enough rodents, you could go egret and eagle in the in the wetlands. Both of those getting the rodentologist bonus. Like that would be a huge point scoring turn at the end of the game. But yeah, they're just not they're not getting enough food draw to to make that a viable option. Yeah. Mother Love is saying getting food twice and play Egret and Eagle in in the wetland definitely a huge point bombs there. Like we're talking about nineteen, so like seventeen points for three turns. I think actually yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah, I think they they they'd have to kind of gamble on the bird feeder a bit. Um, you know, if they took if they took four food. They'd need two of them to be to be rodents, and just because there's none in the tray at the moment, it's a struggle. So, yeah, it's they, it's one of these crossroad points where you start thinking, okay, at some point I'm gonna have to play some of these birds. Yeah, they keep laying eggs and tucking and drawing, and they keep missing the meadow lark because they've already filled up all those ground nest spots. So, and another rodent bird comes up. It, it uh, like wow. eighty percent of the card floating. <laughs> Just this is mad. Yeah, this is that, mad. I swear every time I pick the rodentologist in the game, I see like no I know. birds the whole game. And floating has just seen every single one in the deck has come up for them. But there's no rodents, so they can't play them. Yeah. I Okay, so Floating is really hoping that yeah, Kalaru will turn over the bird feeder here. Um this is gonna help. Uh, like like mother love point out, I think that three turns play for seventeen point is pretty huge. Like almost the best case that floating can play in this in this in this situation here. Yeah, I mean it works out better than their their grasslands. I mean even if they had space to lay all those eggs in the grassland because the they can't use the meadow lark, it's only five a turn. So yeah. yeah, if they now that the bird feed is unlocked, hopefully they get lucky on this reroll. All right, one is that yeah, enough? Well, one. I don't think that's enough. Yeah. I think they need two. So, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. They can, you know, they can get down maybe just the eagle. Um, but they might look at maybe they could go. Um, maybe what if Kolaru pick up food again? 
Yeah, I, do... I mean, maybe they will because they didn't move the sparrow. You'd think if they were gonna, if they were gonna start laying eggs now, they'd have moved the sparrow at least. But I'm not sure. Oh, it look like they're not gonna pick up food, and that's, yeah. I mean, f floating don't really have option here if if no one rolled the bird feeder. No, no. I think at this point they've just got to get down. Uh, you know, probably the egret. Um, you could you could look at getting the hawk down, but I think eager or, or or eagle just for the points, and then lay eggs on the last turn and and just you know take that take the points that you can get. Mm -hmm. mm, it definitely feels like a, a lower scoring game uh, yeah. than it could have been, especially with all these pink powers and and you know the co-op egg birds. You know when you see those cards played, you're thinking okay, both players sort of getting into the 90s into the hundreds, but it just feels like there's been a lot of turns, especially in this last round, a lot of turns going to the bird feeder, not scoring points. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm not sure what the score's going to be here. And actually, I, I don't even know who's going to win. Yeah, I, I have no so, idea. It's so hard to call. No, I, 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 think I have no clue. I, I agree. I mean, another suggestion by Mother Love is maybe play the Egret and also the Hawk, like two turns. So you're, you're making good points and you're not giving free eggs. I think that's a legit play too. Yeah, they have got enough, but uh, it looks like they're going for the owl in the owl and then lay eggs probably. Yeah, is that I better if play? This might be a yeah, this might be a play for the for the end of round. Oh yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to remember how many how many eggs Kalari's got in the forest. I think it might be seven. Yeah. So getting this owl down, you know, that could be a that could be an extra three points for for winning that last end of round goal. All right. Um. Yeah, like you say, I I. I have no idea. Five, six. Okay, that's seven. Yeah. Yeah. I I think yeah. that that's a good point too. Winning that last end of round goal is gonna make up for it. Yep. And Kalara, I think definitely is just gonna go eggs now. Yeah. Um, you know, tuck. They're getting a couple of tucks, so at least they are using all those birds they drew. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's uh, some decent point scoring turns at the end. But yeah, I think they'll be quite frustrated to have lost that that end of round goal because it did look like they had control over that. Yeah. I think Kolaru was like six points grassland here. <clears throat> oh, there's a rodent. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you go. The <laughs> luck. I mean, yeah, floating kind of get blessed with the rodent in this game. Uh, this is this has been a game all about rodents. With one dice, you know. Yeah. All right, that's that's six points. And they they didn't really waste that many cards, so. No, it's worked out in the end, I think. But yeah, still, yeah. Like, I think too many, too many turns going to the bird feeder really for that last round. Yeah, yeah. All right, All right. here we go. Here I, we go. I genuinely no idea. I have no idea. This is gonna be a surprise. <laughs> it could really go either way. Yeah. All right, that's a huge lead with the bird points. Yeah, I think the end of rounds as well. It's quite close. Close. Yeah. So it's gonna be tuck. Yeah. Floating looking pretty good here. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, yeah. Seventy eight yeah, to eighty six. Good it's game. Not a bad winning margin, yeah. Yeah, I mean in the eighties, very nice. Yeah, well yeah. played to both. Well played, good game. Yeah, good game. Yeah, definitely with 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 the setup floating could have had a, a lot of potential to even like maybe break the um, rodentologist record there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if they uh, if they had enough rodents to play all of those, I think for sure they could have been looking at that record because they just had so many rodent cards all throughout the whole game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just at, you know, you're always at the at the mercy of the bird feeder in this kind of game, and yeah, sadly didn't go their way. Right. Yeah.